Good evening. Today the topic of the talk is right view. Right view is a first factor of the Noble Eightfold Path. And uh, first I will explain a bit uh, about what is right view. Uh, there are two types of right view, worldly right view and Aryan right view. <coughs> Right view in Pali, Samaditi. So we have a look here, Samaditi and Lokuttara, Samaditi. So worldly right view is uh, understanding or believing in the law of Kama Vipaka. Kama, as you know, is intentional action. Intentional action to body, speech and mind. And uh, vipaka is the result uh, of creating that karma. So the Buddha said, karma can ripen in this lifetime or in a future lifetime. So worldly right view, uh, basically, <coughs> basically uh, is believe in the law of karma vipaka. If you believe in the law of karma vipaka, then you will be cautious uh, about creating karma. You will not want to create evil karma, harming others, uh, because you know uh, when the vipaka comes back to you, uh, others will harm you. Uh, so that is uh, basically the first important thing about worldly right view. Uh, and if you have a worldly right view, you also believe uh, in rebirth. Uh, that there are different planes of rebirth uh, that a being can be reborn into. Uh, and also that there are holy men uh, who practice a spiritual path to get out of the round of rebirths. Uh, uh. So if a person has worldly right view, uh, he will be... Uh, morally upright, you will be afraid to create evil karma and also because of understanding that there are planes of rebirth, woeful planes of rebirth, then he will lead a more skillful life. Uh, so that uh, is worldly right view. And Aryan right view, uh, it is stated, uh, is understanding the four noble truths the Buddha says uh, the four noble truths uh, are the most important part of his teaching, uh, the core of his teaching. The Buddha said, uh, uh, he told his monks, uh, uh, so long as monks, uh, I did not understand the four noble truths. Uh, I continued on this round of samsara, this round of rebirths. Uh, and it's only by understand the four, understanding the Four Noble Truths uh, that one ends the round of rebirths. Uh, so the Four Noble Truths are of uh, the highest importance uh, in the Buddha's teachings. Uh, so if a person understands the Four Noble Truths, uh, he understands first the suffering, uh, that life is Dukkha. Dukkha can be translated as unsatisfactory or suffering. Actually, suffering would be a more appropriate translation, but a lot of people find it difficult to accept that life is suffering. Why? Because we don't see much suffering. Just like if you tell the rich American that life is suffering, he will laugh in your face. Uh, you think uh, life is good, uh, is living the American dream. <laughs> so, why is it the Buddha said that life is suffering? Because the Buddha saw uh, other planes of existence uh, which are really frightening, uh, which are really suffering. We don't see much suffering because the Buddha says uh, we are living in a happy destination of rebirth. The Buddha mentions uh, five destinations of rebirth. Later books talk about six destinations of rebirth. Liu Tao Lun Wei, 
But the earliest teachings uh, was about five. So the Buddha said that two destinations are happy destinations. Human birth and celestial birth. Birth as a deva or a devi. And there are three woeful planes of existence. The ghost realm, the animal realm and the hell realm. So because we don't see with our physical eye the woeful planes of rebirth, we find it hard to accept that life is suffering. But I'm sure all of you, including myself, have dreamt about the ghost realm. Have you dreamt that you were in the ghost realm? Was it not frightening? Uh, some of you may also have dreamt that you were or in your dream, uh, you were in the hell realm. Yeah. So when you are dreaming, uh, you don't realize that it's a dream. It's so frightening to you uh, when you are in that state of consciousness. We can see uh, that we are all living uh, in altered states of consciousness. Different people have different states of consciousness. There are some people, even though they have a human body, they, their consciousness is like in the hell realm. They are suffering. Their mind is so disturbed. So it's because some of them are so disturbed that they commit suicide. Some of them, some people nowadays especially, go into deep depression. Because of not understanding the Dhamma, they don't create skillful karma. Uh, the karma that create that they, they create uh, is unskillful karma, evil karma. Always uh, thinking about I, uh, always thinking about the self. Uh, so, because of selfishness, uh, we do selfish actions. Uh, always trying to benefit ourself only uh, uh, at the expense sometimes of others. Uh. So, because of not uh, understanding the Dhamma, a lot of people create uh, evil karma. Uh. Uh. So, these uh, woeful planes, uh, if you have dreamt uh, of these states uh, in the ghost realm or in hell, uh, uh, then you will understand that uh, one day uh, your consciousness uh, may descend to that level. Uh, and as I mentioned, uh, even right now, uh, you can see uh, around us uh, some people, uh, their minds are deranged. Uh, so our consciousness is very important. Uh, that's why in Buddhism uh, we cultivate our mind and we do skillful karma to have uh, good states of mind. Uh, so, uh, the Buddha said the first noble truth uh, life is dukkha. Uh, and the cause of dukkha is craving because we have the perception of an eye and mind. Uh, we become very selfish uh, and we want to satisfy our sensual desires. Uh, Sensual desires means uh, the satisfaction through the six senses of the eye, the ear, the nose, the tongue, the body, and the mind. So, because of craving, we continue on the round of rebirths and suffer. And then the third noble truth, the Buddha said, that there is a state of the cessation of dukkha. And this state is called Nibbana. And in this state of Nibbana, there's no greed, hatred, and delusion. All the three poisons have been cut off. And the fourth noble truth uh, is that there is a path leading to the state of Nibbana. And it is called the Noble Eightfold Path. So tonight I talk about the first factor, the Noble Eightfold Path, right view. Tomorrow, I will talk about the whole Noble Eightfold, sorry, not tomorrow, Sunday morning. I will talk about the Noble Eightfold Path in the Buddhist library. 
on Sunday morning, I think 10.30. So if a person has an uh, Aryan right view, huh, it also means uh, that he has worldly right view plus Aryan right view. Now why, why is right view important? Firstly, worldly right view. If you have worldly right view, huh, then you will be afraid uh, of creating evil karma and you will lead a skillful life and create a skillful karma so that you don't get reborn into a woeful plane of existence in your next life. That's why worldly right view is important. However, even though a person with worldly right view, he will not fall most likely or fall into a woeful plane of existence in the next life. But there's no guarantee that in some future lifetime, he will not fall into a woeful plane of existence. In fact, I dare say that if a person does not attain Aryan right view, then he is sure to fall into hell again and again in the future. Because the Buddha says uh, the cycle of birth and death, the cycle of rebirths uh, is endless. Uh, unless you become an Arya, you are not going to step out of the cycle of birth and death. Uh, so you are going to be reborn again and again countless lifetimes. Uh, uh, so in that number of countless lifetimes, uh, we can guarantee you uh, that you will meet with King Yama again. Uh, in hell, what we call Giam Lo Ong. Yeah. Mm. So that's why the Buddha says uh, that this uh, samsara, the round of rebirths, uh, is really, really frightening. Mm. So this uh, Arian right view. Uh, uh, if you have Arin right view, uh, uh, then uh, you will not fall into the woeful plains again. Uh. Mm. Now in the Majjhima Nikaya Sutta 117, uh, the Buddha says uh, that in practicing the Noble Eightfold Path, uh, right view comes first. Uh. You must have right view uh, to enter the Noble Eightfold Path. If you do not have right view, uh, you have not entered the Noble Eightfold Path. Uh, and the Buddha says, uh, first you get right view, and after you get right view, uh, that right view uh, will bring you to right thoughts, and right thoughts will bring you to right speech, and right speech will bring you to right action, which will bring you to right livelihood, and right effort, right... Um, my uh, recollection and finally right concentration. So the Noble Eightfold Path uh, must be practiced in that way, uh, one by one. Uh, not simply roja them up uh, and practice anyone you like. Uh, about 10 years ago, <coughs> we had a lay devotee, a lady in Penang. She was a very uh, serious uh, meditation uh, practitioner. She used to practice uh, vipassana meditation for more than 20 years. And she was so good that she was teaching this meditation. And I hear from reliable sources that she was even uh, said to be an anagamin. Then after 20 over years of meditation, uh, practicing and teaching, uh, she suddenly gave up Buddhism and joined another religion. Uh, so you see, uh, why, why this person uh, was practicing so seriously uh, that every day she was keeping the eight precepts. She was a school teacher, so every day she would wear white, go to school also wear white uh, and keep the eight precepts. And then every time school holiday comes, uh, she will shave her hair 
she was hit and become a man she and then and she did this consistently year after year year after year at the end of it she gave up buddhism so it shows a person without right view you have not entered the noble eightfold path so you put in a lot of effort na no use why because she started off the how do you say doping leo started with the meditation end you are supposed to practice sila samadhi panya sila comes first yeah. actually the noble eightfold path uh, it is not sila actually although it is combined with sila it is right view first uh, right view will bring you to right thoughts uh, after as i explain uh, so right view uh, is extremely important uh, yeah. now Again, I want to show you why right view is so important. There is a sutta in the Anguttara Nikaya 9.20. In this sutta, the Buddha said a long time ago, he was born as a Brahmin, a very rich Brahmin. And in that lifetime, the Buddha said he did so much dana, charity, so much, he was so generous. that the buddha said ha uh, he gave away uh, what amounted to something like 84000 buckets of gold 84000 buckets of silver 84000 buckets of precious stones 84000 pairs of cattle 84000 pairs of goats 84000 pairs of pigs chickens ducks etc and clothing and the food and the drinks he gave uh, the buddha said so much ha uh, it flowed like the river so the buddha said na uh, he did so much uh, this charity ha uh, offerings uh, to benefit so many people but unfortunately the buddha said na uh, the merit na uh, did not amount to very much why because the buddha said na uh, among all the people he did the dana the offerings to huh? not a single one of them had right view the buddha said na nah, he the merit na nah, would have been more huh? if he had given to one person na nah, with right view instead of giving so much to so many people and then after that the buddha said na nah, if he had given uh offerings ah uh, to 100 persons with right view ah uh, that merit na uh, is still less uh, than giving to one person who is a sotapanna a sotapanna is a first fruit area and then after that the buddha said uh, giving to 100 sotapanna ah uh, the merit is less than giving to one second path attainer second marga attainer then after that the buddha said uh, giving to 100 marga 100 second path attainers uh, the merit is less than giving to one second fruit attainer a sakadagamin and giving to 100 sakadagamins uh, the merit is less than giving to one third path attainer similarly 100 third path attainer cannot compare to one third fruit attainer anagamin and 100 anagamin the merit na cannot compare to one second a uh, fourth path attainer uh, giving to 100 fourth path attainers cannot compare the merit na of giving to one fourth fruit attainer uh, arahant so from here you see ha uh, actually a person who has right view ha uh, is actually a first path attainer now this ha uh, our buddhist teachings are very chapalang le roja le so you have to be very careful now this some monk say that uh, Uh, when you attain the first path uh, it immediately turns to fruit 
This is not what the Buddha says. This comes from the Abhidharma. What the Buddha says in the Sutta is when a person attains the path, it is just the understanding. He understands the Dhamma, but his person has not changed. After understanding the Dhamma, he has to practice it. For example, if a person listens to the Four Noble Truths, uh, listens to the Dhamma, and then he attains right view, uh, he becomes a stream enterer. He has entered the stream, uh, he has attained the first path. After that, uh, he has to work, study more suttas, practice meditation, etc. Slowly, uh, his understanding deepens. Uh, and then the path uh, turns to fruit. Uh, it's like uh, the fruit has ripened. Uh, so when he attains the fruit, uh, the sotapanna, the three factors fall away. Uh, when he attains the uh, path, uh, the factors have not fallen away. Uh, that means uh, that understanding uh, is not deep enough uh, for the factors to fall away. It takes some time for that wisdom to ripen. He has to work by keeping the sila, listening more to Dhamma, by meditating, and then over a period of time, his understanding deepens, uh, and then the three, three factors uh, falls away uh, when it turns to fruit. Uh. Also, the Sutta says, uh, when he attains uh, Sotapanna, the fruit, uh, then only uh, his faith becomes unshakable. In other words, uh, the path attainer, the faith is not yet said to be unshakable. Also in this Sutta, you see, uh, this Anguttara Nikaya 9.20, uh, that you can make offerings uh, to a path attainer. You can make offerings to a fruit attainer. Uh, if a person attains the path and immediately the next moment, the next karna, or in Sanskrit, shana, the next moment it turns to fruit, na, then you have no chance of making merit na, of foresee na, a path attainer. But in this sutta and also in another sutta, Dakkina Vibhanga Sutta, Majjhima Nikaya, it is said na, that you can make offerings to a path attainer, which confirms na, that a path attainer exists longer than just one moment. Yeah? You can make offerings to him. Uh, definitely he exists. It's not that he does not exist. Uh. So, so here you see, uh, to become an Arya, uh, to attain stream entry, uh, you must get right view. If you have not attained right view, uh, you have not become an Arya. In the suttas, the Buddha always says, all the Aryans uh, have right view. Uh, that's why you find in this uh, Sutta, uh, the Buddha said in his previous life as a Brahmin, he gave to so many people, uh, but the merit was very little because nobody had right view. In other words, no Arya around. All were ordinary putujana, ordinary worldling. Uh. So now we come to the important question, how can we get right view? How can we get Aryan right view? Uh, this is given uh, in the Majjhima Nikaya, Sutta number 43. In this Sutta, it is said uh, that there are two conditions for right view. The first one is the voice of another. And the second one is Yoniso Manasikara. The voice of another. In other words, uh, Somebody teaching you the Dhamma, only then uh, can you get right view. If you don't listen to the Dhamma, you can never get right view. Uh, just meditation alone, uh, you will not get right view. It must come from the voice of another. That's why when the Sammasambuddha appears in the world and he turns the Dhamma wheel, uh, he teaches the Dhamma. The Buddha taught the Dhamma for 45 years. Uh, some people think listening to the Dhamma is not important. Meditation is important. If meditation was so important, the Buddha would not have spoken so many suttas, more than 5,000 suttas the Buddha spoke. Uh, and the Buddha would see uh, 
those people uh, who had the ability uh, to attain stream entry, uh, he would teach the Dhamma to them, uh, basically on the Four Noble Truths. And usually they would attain stream entry. Uh. So, the first condition uh, is listening to the Dhamma. And the second condition is Yoniso Manasikara. You can translate it simply as proper attention. When you listen to the Dhamma, you must have proper attention. When you are listening to the Dhamma, don't think of the, about the stock exchange. <laughs> so, this word Yoniso Manasikara, Yoniso comes from the word Yoni. Yoni means the womb, the birthplace, the origin. And Manasikara consists of two words, Mana and Kara. Mana is the mind. Kara is work. So Manasikara is the work of the mind. And when you combine this Yoniso Manasikara, it means the work of the mind that brings you to the origin, the birth of the problem. In other words, thorough consideration. When you consider something, uh, you consider very thoroughly. Uh, you are able to go up to the source of the problem. You understand fully. Uh, right? Uh, so, but to put it simply, uh, you can say proper attention. Or oh, I think Rebel Bhikkhu Bodhi translates it as careful attention. Careful attention. Uh, so it conveys that meaning uh, that when you listen, uh, you have to pay careful attention, you have to pay proper attention. Uh, so only two conditions uh, are necessary for right view. So you see, uh, if the Buddha did not come and teach the Dhamma in the world, uh, you cannot find Aryans in the world. Uh, a person, if he meditates uh, and is very skillful, uh, he will end up like Jesus Christ uh, or some yogi, some Indian yogi with psychic power. Uh, uh, but meditation also is important. Uh, it's not that meditation is not important. But basic, uh, basic foundation uh, must be there, which is right view. And right view comes from listening to the Dhamma. That is why uh, in the suttas we find the Buddha calls his disciples uh, Savaka. It doesn't matter whether his disciple is a monk or a nun or a layman or a laywoman. All of them are called Savakas. Chinese we translate as Shunwen, yeah? uh, listeners, hearers. So if you listen to the Buddha's words, uh, you are considered his disciple. If you don't listen to his words, you are not his disciple. One day you say you are a Buddhist, another day you are no more a Buddhist. Uh, it's only from understanding the Dhamma that we have unshakable faith. Uh, now, what Dhamma should we listen uh, to get right view? Uh, as I mentioned just now, our Buddhist teachings, our Dhamma is all very roja already. So you have to find uh, the real teachings of the Buddha. Uh, the real teachings Buddha, you have to go to the time when the Buddha preached. Uh, when, the Buddha, when the earliest times uh, when the Buddha preached, uh, a lot of teachings available nowadays was not available. Uh, in other words, uh, the earliest teachings uh, were the four Nikayas, or in the Chinese we call Ahanjing. The Diga Nikaya, long discourses, Majima Nikaya, middle length discourses, Sangyutta Nikaya, topically group discourses, uh, Angutra Nikaya, numerically arranged discourses. These are the earliest discourses of the Buddha. Uh, so uh, that is important to study. Uh, I have written a book called Liberation Chieto. I think our brother Robin uh, is uh, they, they are available there later. You can get uh, where I have explained these books. Uh, now, how do you know uh, when you have entered the stream? Uh, 
people like to ask this question. Is some people think uh, they've been listening to the Dhamma for so many years, uh, uh, maybe they have entered the stream. So they want to know. Well, there are certain characteristics the Buddha has mentioned in the suttas. The first one uh, uh, is not really a correct. It's not something that you can see. The Buddha said, once you have attained right view, you've entered the stream, you'll never be reborn as a ghost or as an animal or fall into the woeful plains. If you can achieve this, this is the best thing you can you can get in life. There's nothing more valuable than to enter the stream. We are afraid of the round of rebirths. We are afraid of samsara. Why? Only because of the three woeful planes of existence that you can be reborn as a ghost, that you can be reborn as an animal or in hell. If I get the guarantee uh, that I will never be reborn as a ghost, as an animal or in hell, uh, that I will only be reborn as a human being, and as a Deva or Devi, yeah, then no need to go out of Sangsara, isn't it? <laughs> Why want to go out of Sangsara? Life is not bad. No? So that's why uh, it is so important uh, to attain uh, this right view. Once you attain right view already, uh, you are guaranteed that you will never fall into the three woeful planes of existence. Uh, and also, uh, the Buddha says uh, that a person with right view uh, has a maximum of seven more rebirths uh, before he enters Nibbana. Maximum of seven more rebirths. In which case, uh, you can take a slow boat now of samsara. Uh, no need to hurry. Uh, every time you come, you are either a human being or a deva or devi. And he said in the suttas uh, that if you come back as a human being also, uh, you will be a person with a lot of blessings. Uh, uh, want a rich family, you'll be looking handsome or beautiful, uh, strong, uh, and all that. So then in that case, uh, is, and no need to worry uh, about going out of samsara in a hurry. Thirdly, uh, the Buddha says uh, that once a person has become an Arya, he has he or she uh, has unshakable faith in the Buddha, the Dhamma, and the Sangha. And that person has, sometimes it's called perfect sila, perfect moral conduct. Sometimes it's called Aryan moral conduct. Uh, this Aryan moral conduct uh, is not so difficult to achieve. Uh, this one I will explain when I talk about the, the Noble Eightfold Path. Uh. Basically, uh, Aryan Sila consists of three factors of the Noble Eightfold Path. Right speech, right action, and right livelihood. Right speech consists of four precepts. Right action consists of three precepts. Right livelihood na, is uh, not really considered a precept na, because right livelihood means uh, you already have right speech and right action. Uh, so these three factors, uh, right speech, right action, and right livelihood, na, amounts to seven precepts. Uh, seven precepts. If you keep seven precepts, uh, and you study the Dhamma, you make a lot of effort uh, to understand the suttas, uh, uh, you're on the way to achieving right view. Uh. So, that is another characteristic. Another characteristic, uh, the Buddha says, uh, when a person attains right view, uh, it means he has seen the Dhamma clearly. Uh. Yes, of course, uh, the right view of a Sotapanna uh, is different from the right view of an Arahan. Uh, an Arahan sees the Dhamma more clearly. Uh, but the basic Dhamma, this uh, person with right view, uh, the stream enterer, uh, he has achieved. Uh. 
So when he has achieved right view, uh, he has seen the Dhamma, then his view of life is different already. Uh, a lot of us, uh, when we are young, uh, we like to enjoy life. Uh, we like to jolly jolly. Yeah? Uh, go to Kopitiam, uh, uh, go and see Pua Chukang, uh, <laughs> all this. Yeah? Uh, but as we understand the Dhamma more, uh, we become spiritually mature. As we become spiritually mature, you become more serious about life. Uh, and you start to enjoy less. Uh, you don't go to karaoke. Uh, you, just, you try to stop your drinking sessions, uh, happy hour, and uh, casino, uh, all these things. Uh, so, sometimes your friends see you, uh, they say, hey, this fella, change person already, bien uh, liao. So you seem a bit queer la, to worldly people, uh, but that is the price we pay, la, because there's an Indian saying, the holy path is the path of the alone, to the alone, by the alone, and it's a lonely path. La. Few people have the courage to walk, few people have the courage to persevere. Uh, so. Uh, once you have the vision of the Dhamma, you become a changed person. Another characteristic the Buddha says uh, in the suttas, uh, that once a person attains right view, uh, he becomes independent of others in the Buddha's teachings, uh, becomes independent of some teacher. He realizes uh, that his real teacher is the Buddha. The real teacher is in the suttas, the, te the words of the Buddha. Uh, a lot of people, when we are new, uh, we like to go all over the world, uh, all over the world, hunting for a whole Yao Suhu. Yeah. Uh, everybody wants a whole Yao Suhu, uh, famous teacher. But when you understand the Dhamma, you don't bother to look for whole Yao Suhu already. Chia uh, Liao Suhu is our Pen Si Si Chia Moni for original teacher, Mr. Buddha. So that is why yeah, the Buddha said, nah, be a lamb unto yourselves, be a refuge unto yourselves, with no other refuge. Take the Dhamma as your lamb, take the Dhamma as your refuge, with no other refuge. Uh, so we rely on the Buddha's words and we rely on our effort to practice the Buddha's teachings. In the Diga Nikaya, there is one sutta where the Buddha says uh, that his teachings are perfect, perfect and complete and pure. You cannot find another spiritual teaching, uh, another holy teaching uh, more perfect uh, than the Buddha's teaching. A Sama Sambuddha is very hard to find in the world. So the Buddha says, uh, if you think uh, you want to add to the Buddha's words, uh, you don't understand the Dhamma. If you think you want to subtract the Buddha's words, you also don't understand the Dhamma. Uh, but unfortunately, after the Buddha passed away, uh, a lot of later monks, uh, they thought uh, that they should add to the Buddha's words. Uh, they start writing a lot of new books. Uh, Actually, it's all unnecessary because you make people more confused. Uh, a lot of the later writings, uh, if you investigate, uh, there are contradictions uh, with the or Buddha's original teachings. Uh, so, uh, don't look for other teachings uh, other than the earliest teachings of the Buddha found in the four Nikayas. Uh, 